Ada. <laughs> Well, we'll start uh, there. We always starting with a laugh is good. So, how are you doing anyway? You caught me halfway through my coffee. <laughs> very, very well, thank you, Matt. <laughs> Extremely well. It's, it's awesome. a lovely warm minus one here in Sweden today. So, I'm I'm off in my oh. bathers after this conversation. Minus one. Joking. Do you? You know what? Do, do you? I don't suppose. I don't know how much you do or don't like the cold, but you know the whole world's getting into this ice bath stuff now and and they've mm. started doing my t- I haven't done it yet, but everyone promotes the health benefits. Is that have you are you someone that kind of enjoys jumping in cold water or or not? I do it. I wouldn't say I enjoy oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah, the, actually that the question should have been do you do it? I don't think anyone really enjoys it. I've not I'm yet yeah. to tr- I'm yet to try it. I think I did it when I was in Norway many years ago, but um but now, of course, everyone's grabbing these these you know little bar things and filling them with ice. So I, it's something on my my bucket list for next year. I think so. Oh, as you've seen, I, I have a sauna literally on the on my jetty, and the ocean's frozen. Um, wow. Okay. Sometimes I, I I don't want to jump through the ice, so what I do is I have steel buckets on the end of a rope, and I throw that in the ocean, break, pull the ice water up. I'll go and sit in the sauna up to about 80 Celsius for about an hour, and then I'll jump outside and I'll just throw these buckets of ice water. Extremely good for your immune system, extremely good for your body. It just It's just bloody good for you. Uh, yeah. One of the things that happens is what's called a, um, a dive reaction. When cold water hits your face, your body immediately retracts all of the blood into your internal organs because it thinks you've dived into some cold water. Um, that's very good for your body. All of the little things, all of the little, um, what's the word I'm looking for, all of the little valves and yeah. mechanics of being able to do that. You know, if your body doesn't do that for 10, 20 years because it doesn't have to, then there are certain things in your body that are atrophying because they're not being used. So by treating yourself hot and cold, wherever you are in the world, you are ensuring that these little things in your body aren't atrophying and rotting away inside you, causing illnesses. Lots of little things. Yeah, well, I, the last time I did it was years ago when I was on a husky trek in, in Norton in the Arctic Circle, and I did the whole sauna to the snow thing. And it was awesome because it, when you're that hot and you do it, you, there's there's a few seconds where you just, you're doing it, but you don't kind of feel anything. But I sense... Doing it from cold to cold is going to feel colder. If you get my get my meaning, I shall see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, tonight's question, one you like, and take it in whatever direction you want. Um, We'll go for ten or so, or however many minutes, really. Um, It's one you've been asked many times, but we haven't chatted about it on this series. But what is death? Uh huh. Death is when the vehicle has had enough. Death is, uh, okay. Matter, as you know, has a very, very short shelf life, half shelf life, whatever you want to call it. Matter, at best, can hold itself together in a human form for maybe 80 to 100 years. Uh, And then you've got to get a new one. That's basically all that death is. Uh, to get through your life, an average human that's, say, going to live to 90 years old, I mean, some can do it, some can have the same vehicle, some people are still driving around in Model T Fords, I guess. But, you know, you're going to have a vehicle for five or ten years, depending on where you live, it's going to be pretty crappy and pretty decrepit and it's going to get rust in it and eventually it's going to be dangerous, so you're going to have to get rid of it and get a new vehicle. That's death. Mm. Death of the vehicle, not the spirit. Oh, I was about let me let me ask a kind of I suppose a, a, a hyphened question to it. Then, what is left after death? And I don't mean obviously, assuming we're talking the body is matter. It, you know, what what? How can you how to how to describe to the layperson what is left afterwards? You the 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 pure essence of yourself your spirit awareness the animating force that you are in there keeping that vehicle animated 
spirit, mind. You don't lose identity when you die. You know who you were. You know who you are. It's the only difference is you're not thinking about it. That it's like if you get into a very highly intelligent car and that they're out there these days, it knows you're in there and it knows who you are. It won't start without your voice recognition. You know, these new cars, they do this. <clears throat> if it doesn't recognize you, it won't start up for you. It, it, it knows you're in there and your body knows you're in there and your body knows when you've left. Whatever you are that gets in and out of these vehicles, that part of the universe that is focused into being mat right now, mm. that's what's left. Nothing leaves at all. Can I keep drilling down on this? This is interesting. So, because I know right, think, thinking of the, uh, the the audience, so that but what it what of that that is left is you know the is is that an individual sense of being, or is it is that just the perception you get while you're in your body? I suppose the perception you get while you're in your body, hmm. where, where it, it looks like and it seems like you are an individual, not connected to or part of anything other than you're just a fragmented unit, unconnected to anything else. That's how it seems. That's the delusion of living in matter. Hmm. It's like once again, you get into your own motor car driving down the highway. You feel as safe as houses. You're in your own car. You're listening to your own music. You're comfortable. It's a good temperature. And then suddenly a bus comes across the highway and smacks you and you're dead. That You wasn't prepared for that. Um, it's the same with your body. You know, it's you're in there. It knows you're in there. You're working together. You You give the impetus for that body to move forward and do things and think you give it animation, you give it life, you give it objectives. When you leave, when you step out of that vehicle, it doesn't have any of that. So it's basically a car sitting in the driveway, not even idling. It's just sitting there. So, I have actually forgot the question you just asked because I. <laughs> well, you were kind. Of, you were kind of answering. I, I was just I, the reason I asked it. Let me take a step back. Is when when you were talking about what is left, and you were saying, "Well, you and and you were." I suppose for me, when someone says "you," I think about I. Then I think about ego. Then I think about the kind of the 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 non oh, I or, or, or I think about the wrong perception of what "you" means. So to anyone, you know, kind of saying "you" makes me think, well. Yeah, that you is not really what I think about as me right now, right? I mean, that it is, you take a strip away that physical form and the ability to to kind of have that vessel to view this current state, um, whatever you want to call it, or this realm. Yeah, and I know intellectualizing these things is, the, is almost the wrong way to, to get there, but it, trying to intellectualize taking away that and just you is left when you is not really the you that exists when you have that physical state, what is that? There is a part of you and you could focus in on it if you really wanted to. And if you really put some effort into it, there's a part of you right now, or just a few seconds ago, that was aware of what you were saying to me. You're aware of what you want to say to me. You're aware of what you're saying to me. You're watching yourself speak to me. Whatever you are in there that's watching that thinking and aware of the talking and aware of what's going on, that awareness, that's you. That doesn't come or go. It's really easy to figure it out. Mm. <clears throat> you're aware of when you're thinking and talking. You're also aware of moments when you're not thinking or talking. What is that awareness? That's you. Mm. If you're aware of when you're thinking, then your thinking isn't you. The awareness is. If you're aware of when you're not thinking, then the thinking is obviously is not you because you're not thinking, but you're still there being aware of that fact. Your emotions can come and go, but your awareness of those things is always there. It knows when the emotions aren't there and you know when you do have emotions. You know when your thoughts are there and you know when your thoughts aren't there. So whatever you are in there has bugger all to do with whether or not you're thinking or whether or not you're you see what i mean it's a whole different thing mm. it's invisible it's 
it's infinite it has it's not made of matter it i should be saying you that's what's left is that pure awareness and it's in all things the one common denominator that all life anywhere in the cosmos has is awareness it's the common denominator everything has it look at it another way since the day you were born you've lost hair it's gone gray you don't see as well as you used to you've gotten fatter your ears don't hear as well but your awareness has not changed since the day you were born it hasn't slowed down it hasn't gotten less it hasn't gotten gray it hasn't gotten old it is exactly the same as it was the day you were born and it'll be exactly the same the day your body dies that's a part of you that doesn't age it's always there but if you don't focus in on it you will live your whole life as a human body and never ever know that you were in it and then you got to start again this is why all of these practices of enlightenment came about in the first place is to ask the question you just asked which one am i am i the body or am i something else when the body ends we call that death but what is left this is the question that started off mysticism thousands of years ago did i answer anything there you did i just want to say by the way i'm not i'm not a comically laughing at your answer but the points where you were saying you're you're, you're fat you're bold you're you're uh you were you were so well describing my my 50 year old body i was i was uh oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no you did answer it. it prompted one more question that, <clears throat> and yeah you know to the the to the point of you know that journey of enlightenment and and awareness which is the beginning of that process um is there a link it seems logical for me that there's a link between that when you look back historically on the kind of biological physical evolution of the human being and the enlightenment or is it um, you know B buddha was whatever two and a half thousand years ago so were many other kind of spiritual type individuals that roamed the, the planet um which i always find really intriguing because there would have been quite a big gap there between many much of the population or maybe not that's my perception but is there a link or is it you know do we go back ten thousand years and there were you know people uh, you know as or if not more kind of aware and enlightened as there are today oh more more mm. so yeah yeah enlightened people were uh, well of course when religion came along enlightened people had to be wiped out because it would have proven everything about religion to be wrong and religion let's not go into it but we know that yeah. it, it's had it, it's had its go at taking over the planet um so anything that um showed it to be wrong science chemistry which is a science enlightenment spiritual practices all of those would show up religion as being wrong and not knowing what they're talking about and not knowing the difference between right and wrong and as we know today if you don't know the difference between right and wrong that's basically insanity yeah. that's enough to put you in a mental asylum for the rest of your life so the fact that religion doesn't know the difference between right and wrong means that they're insane which means religion is insane and i probably shouldn't have said that but there you go <laughs> <coughs> that's right so it, there is a, there is a link there there were more so back then there was left less to think about more to look at less spiritual suppression spiritual suppression is a new thing yeah really um spiritually enlightenment wise you would have done a lot better two three thousand years ago especially if you were living in an area where people weren't going to try and kill you for whatever reason yeah right it Mystics seems like there was there seems like there was a much bigger gap back then between there might have been a much bigger community like that and then there was Absolutely. a big gap and then there was you know whereas now that the, there seems to be lesser of a gap but also less on the enlightened side i suppose yeah absolutely look at um i forget the name of the place because i'm just like that i forget names <laughs> there's a place in the himalayas still today uh it's kind of like shangri-la and its constitution is you have to be happy that's its constitution <laughs> you've got to, you have to be happy that's that's if you're going to live there you've got to be a lovely happy person and that's it's i just uh, forgot the name i just forgot the name as well you know the one I'm talking oh, yeah, about. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say the one that has the um, I don't know why I can't remember it. Anyway, 
It's ridiculous. I'm the same. It's, it's ridiculous. I can't remember it. It's it it's uh, it, anyway, we don't want to bore the audience with us trying to rack our brains, but it it it's to uh. I was going to say Tibet. It's obviously not Tibet, but um, it'll come to me just before we say goodbye. But uh, it it, it or, has or it, in instead of it, it has the happiness index instead of the GDP. That's that's what it is. Yeah, so yeah, I've just yeah. forgotten for a minute. Anyway, everyone watching will know, and there's pl plenty of comments now below that we just don't know our shit. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Maybe that's a great segue to the end of our, our series, I think. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. We don't know our shit. Let's give up. <laughs> awesome. Wonderful. Look, it's been really, it's been great. Um, and it's nearing Christmas. So uh, hopefully you're going to have some some holidays. I'm not sure. I know it's cold there, but um, yeah, we'll keep talking. I'm in, so. the, I'm in the middle of a six week retreat right now. Oh, I came awesome. out of it to talk to you today. Oh. Mate, I massively appreciate that. So, um, yeah, oh, it's been great. I loved it. It's been brilliant. I'm looking forward to seeing these. Yeah. Okay, my friend. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening to this. Uh, we hope that you are enjoying it as much as we do because it's really great fun. And really, at the end of the day, we're expanding our minds whether you do anything with it or not, it's irrelevant. The fact that you've expanded your mind, whether you believe it or not, you've expanded your mind into disbelief or more belief. It's good for you. Thought for the day. Awesome. Good words to end on. And um, yeah, get back to your retreat. I hope it goes well and, and we shall speak again soon. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks, buddy. Ciao. Cheers, Cheers Jim. All the best. Thanks. You too. Is 1095. To you again. You know what? It's really bugging me that country. It begins with D. And we're not, this isn't on the podcast now. It's really I bugging thought me. It began with, I thought it began with a B. Oh, uh, like, uh, yes. No, it does. Bhutan. B -b 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 Bhutan. Ah. Can, can, you, can you edit that in? <laughs> I, I, it's okay. I'll just. Um, Anyway, people people may be watching this now because this might be like a one minute outtake that I put up separately to show that we do still have our minds. Yeah. <laughs> How many old guys does it take to remember a name? <laughs> Butan. I haven't been there. So anyway, Butan, Butan. it does sound beautiful. Um, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One day, maybe you and I can go there one day and have a look together, see what happens. Excuse me. Wonderful.